completely wouldn't have guessed that the machine we were building would be used to attack the, the game of Go. Go is a two-player strategy-based board game with 10 to the power of 170 possible board combinations, making it incredibly complex. And this complexity drew the attention of the Google DeepMind team and ultimately led to the creation of AlphaGo, which is a computer program that combines advanced search tree and deep neural networks to create an AI-powered Go player that was eventually tested against human competitors. And while AlphaGo rightly gets all the glory, I recently learned that tensor processing units, or TPUs, are the hardware accelerators that make AlphaGo possible. So I caught up with Cliff Young, a researcher at Google Brain, and one of the designers responsible for bringing TPUs into the world to learn more. You know, not too long after Project Kickoff, Google acquired DeepMind and Brain held a, a DeepMind summit. I got to give a, a short talk about we're building this TPU thing. It wasn't even called a TPU at the time. We had no name for it. And some of the DeepMind people kind of paid attention. And then when we had one said, could we have a few? And then like by themselves got AlphaGo running and came back to us like, you know, a few weeks into having having the first generation TPU. And so we got it running. We were wondering, you know, is this, is this as good as we can do? And, and it was an example of co-design, right? They had built a bunch of convolutional layers with 128 by 128 structure. And we looked at their, their models and said, you know, the, the physical hardware array is four times bigger than that. You could make your matrices 256 by 256, and it would go no slower. A day later, they changed and said, oh, that, that improved accuracy. And there was this sort of run up where they they published in, in Nature, I think, about test matches against a European Go champion. But then they scheduled the challenge match in 2016 or something like that against Lisa Dahl. And they kept on working on the engineering, right? They focused down on how many TPUs they could coordinate in a single game tree exploring calculation. And they tuned the calls back and forth between the TPUs and, and the head node. They actually asked us for some optimizations uh, to the TPU stack to remove one trip back to the host from things. And that, that like, reduced the time to do a particular calculation and like gave them, I don't know, 30% more throughput or something along those lines. So before we get into the matchup between AlphaGo and Lee Sadal, it's worth pointing out that we're talking about a very particular moment in time and that AlphaGo and TPUs have evolved significantly since then. In the Lee Sadal matchup, AlphaGo was powered by 48 distributed TPUs, whereas the most current version of AlphaGo, named AlphaZero, is powered by four TPUs on a single machine. I feel like the match itself gave the best of all possible results because it wasn't a wasn't a clean sweep we took four out of five which meant every little thing that anybody put into building the tpu or building AlphaGo or the dialogue between them every little bit helped if any one of us had not had the time to put in you know that little tweak or build this part of the system or make the machine run at the speed that it did then that might have been the difference between four to one and one to four and then at the point where it was like we won three and people were wondering about being a sweep and, and we we lost the fourth match there's still room for us to do better right? That every little bit of effort count. That that was, maybe that's a pure personal perspective on it, but I, I found that incredibly satisfying. That was like my my actual hope ahead of time was that it wasn't a sweep, that it would, it would be that close just because it would mean uh, that there was that, that much importance for all the engineering that went into it. AlphaGo is obviously phenomenal, but TPUs weren't created for AlphaGo. So I was curious, what inspired the creation of TPUs? The, the origin story we tell about the TPUs is that we saw all of this image processing and speech recognition volume that the Jeff Dean, a senior fellow head of head of uh, Google Research, did a back of the envelope calculation and said, suppose in the no somewhat near future, everybody needs three minutes of voice recognition. If you multiply out the number of people using these devices times the amount of compute for each of those analyses, you ended up with a number that was astronomical even by Google standards, that we worried that we would have to double or triple the size of Google's fleet, right? Like take whatever whatever set of warehouse scale computers you had around the planet that Google was already using at, at a cost of billions of dollars, multiply that number by a factor of two or three. And that seemed like we can see all the benefits. That cost is awfully a lot. But the piece of it though is actually computer architectural history. And, and one of the super cool things about it is that there are a bunch of old ideas that weren't right for their time, but that turn out to be just right if you know the history. The systolic array, uh, computational unit that's the center of the matrix multiplier in all of our TPUs was originally invented in the late 70s and early 80s. And at the time, it was a super cool, like algorithmically elegant and beautiful solution that couldn't be deployed at large enough scale. Using the technology of the early 80s, you could essentially put one multiplier on a chip. And the biggest systolic array you could build was determined by the number of chips you could put together. So so I recall seeing an, you know, an eight-chip systolic array machine, which had eight multipliers in it, and that 
could demonstrate nice eight-way parallelism for the set of problems that systolic arrays worked on. But that particular era of integration of, of Moore's law wasn't big enough to really let systolic arrays come into their prime. Uh, fast forward 25 years later, 30 years later to the first generation TPU, and the integration is such that we could put 64,000 or 128,000 arithmetic logic units in a single chip in one corner. And now a structure that you couldn't make practical because it was too big to fit on the chips of 1980 is just the right thing to make matrix multiplication go ridiculously fast in 2015 or 16. We've gone deep into AlphaGo and also explored the origin story of TPUs. So the next question is, what else is powered by TPUs? And so it, it's kind of cool that this obscure technique, right? Like inside the guts of deep learning, it's based on huge amounts of data and computationally intensive matrix multiplication operations, which we all loved in high school algebra. It's super cool that there's a high leverage point that by making a small number of things incredibly efficient, other people are, are, are able to take the machines that we build and use them for things we hadn't even imagined, right? It's rare that one ha can have a specialty like you know computer architecture or even narrower special purpose computer architecture. And that by working in that narrow discipline have a, have a broad effect on the world and, and sort of contribute to powering a, a, a scientific res revolution, right? So the, this, this technology has infiltrated many, many different product lines inside of Google. And so uh, deep learning in general and TPUs in particular are used in core businesses like search and ads. They're used in Google Photos. They're used by the Maps division. They're of course used, still used by the speech recognition department. Before talking to Cliff, I had no idea that tensor processing units powered so many of the apps and services that I've come to rely on every single day. And I really loved hearing about AlphaGo and how history inspires today's technology. So what's next for TPUs? We know how we built it. We know what we wish we'd done better, but we don't actually know how it's going to be used, right? We don't know what people are going to ask us to do with it, or you know, even better, what, what people are going to use it for that we had never guessed about. 